we're gonna talk about coming when called today. And that's, that's when your dog comes running to you when you call them. And it's, it's really helpful if, um, if your dog ever gets loose, if they ever get, you know, slip, slip out of their collar, get out of your yard. Um, it's just really helpful to have a dog that's really eager to come to you. So we're gonna cover coming when called today. And um, there's a couple easy ways to teach it. What we're gonna do first is we're gonna teach the dog that touching our hand is really a good thing to do. And I'm gonna put the hand right by my side so that if we're out in the field somewhere and my dog comes to me, I can actually get him to come right here, which is exactly where I need him to be. So there's no guesswork for the dog at all. It's not come, come this close to me. It's not come, you know, 10 feet away. It's come right here, because that's where I need the dog to be. Come on, Scoon. So let's show you, first of all, the hand touches. Here, babe. The hand is straight up and down. As Soon as the dog touches the hand, he's gonna tell him he did a great job, and he gets his goodie, okay? What I'd like, relatively quickly, I want that hand to be right where it needs to be, which is right by my leg. Here, love. Now you're not gonna do it, huh? Good boy. Good job. You can see how I'm slowly getting that hand right where it needs to be. And for him, I actually need to hold it up a little bit higher because he's so he's so tall. If I hold it down here, it's actually harder for him to get to. Oh boy. So once I have, I'm willing to bet you $100 that when I put my hand out, he's gonna touch it, then all you have to do is add your word. I use the word here and I say it in a happy voice. Goons, here. Good boy. That was really tough because there's a big distraction behind us. Scooter, here. I want to sound inviting. I want to, I, it, I want him to think that he's missing a party. And here, if I say here in a really nasty tone, like get here or else, here, he's going to say, I don't want to come to your party. I don't like your party. So once we have that, we're going to add in a little bit of distance. Scooter, here. So you can see he had to take a step to me. It might not seem like much, but hey, if he can't take a step to me, he's not going to come from across the field. Schooner here. And if he chooses not to, that's fine. He just won't get his, just won't get his reward. Here, babe. Here. Here, babe. Here. We might have to be you're not gonna do it, huh? You're not gonna do it? Let's have a party. Let's have a party. Schooner. Here. Yeah, go boy. Go boy. Here. Schooner, here. So once they get good at a couple of steps, you're gonna add in two steps, three steps, four steps, five steps. You're gonna really sort of let them get further and further away. Use your word here, put the hand down. Really, really, really give them lots and lots of goodies when they get to you. Um, before, if, you're, if the behavior isn't really well trained, I want you to put your dog on a nice long leash. I don't want you to try this without any leash at all. Because once they're once they wander so far away from you, they're gone. If they don't, if they don't know this, they're gone. So I want you to, this is a nice 20 or 30 foot leash where the dog has room to wander, but he really can't go that far. Um, so what I'd like you to do is put the long leash on him. Schooner, here. Oh boy. And when they come wandering back, after you say your word here, I want you to have a party. Party, party, party. Good boy, good boy, get out. Good boy, good boy, good boy. Schooner, here. You turkey. Good. We swapped dogs for come when called because Schooner was a great um, sort of demo for how you start this. And Tango is going to be a good demo dog for how this progresses further. So once you have your dog very eagerly and willingly touching the hand, and then after you add your word, um, which for me it's here, here, 
and the dog is moving quickly to the hand. Now we're able to add some more distance. So I can actually um, ask Tango, Tango to come over this way and then say here. And you can see how quickly he comes to me. I don't have any food in my hand, by the way. Um, he's just coming to me. So now I'm using food to get him further away. So I can actually say, Tango, here. You see how quickly he comes running. Um, that's what I want when you call your dog when they get loose or something. I want them running. Tango, here. Very happily. He has no hesitation whatsoever. So once we have that, and you notice I have him on a shorter leash. Once we have that, then we can start to actually add some more distance. And what we're going to do is I have my trusty longer leash here. I'm going to give Tango some more room to wander because now I think he's got the idea of what I need him to do, which is come running quickly. So I'm going to toss this treat a fair distance away. Let him go get it out of the tango here. That's what I want. I want that real happy coming when called. Tango here. Good boy. And I still have no worries of him running off because I have him on leash. Tango here. So what we have to add to this, what we haven't added yet, are distractions. We, earlier we had some squirrels running around, which would have been great distractions, but we've been working here long enough that they've now departed this area. Um, so what you need to do is you need to add in some distractions. So you can have a person walk through while you're working on this. You can add some, um, some interesting, but not really super attractive things for your dog. So you might have to go around or step over. Um, just know that the more distracting items you put down, the shorter the distance the dog should have to come to you when you're teaching this, okay? So when you're teaching this, if, if there are no distractions, it can be a nice long distance. Tango here! Um, if there are no distractions, the distance, distance can be further. If you have some distractions, make that distance shorter simply because it's, it's harder for the dog to learn when two things, when two, um, when you're working on two different options like distractions and distance. Um, sit. So the one thing I'm gonna stress is I always want it to be a party when the dog gets to you. So let's just pretend that Tango ran away and he went across the street and visited the neighbor dog across the way. When I call him to me and he comes, I'm gonna reward him. I'm rewarding the behavior of coming back to me. He's already been rewarded for running and playing with the other dog. That's already happened. He's already been rewarded. He already had fun. What I want him to really understand is that coming back to me is also really rewarding. So when your dog comes back to you, tell them how good they are. Give them a, give them a food treat, play with them. If they come to you and you tell them how bad they were, what a bad dog, they associate in their mind the thing that just happened, which is they came to you, with the discipline that they're now getting. And they'll, they'll, they'll file that away and go, okay, I'll remember that next time. I'm already gonna be in trouble when I get to you, so I'm just gonna continue to have a good time and elude capture while you chase them, because that's fun too. So the coming when called starts with a really good hand touch, then you add the word tango here, and then you add in distance and distractions, okay? So it's really pretty easy, and again, the thing I want you to remember, make it fun for your dog and sound happy when you're calling them. For more fast, fun, and easy dog training ideas, visit smartdoguniversity.com. Please subscribe to the video and leave a comment below.